All right. Um, so, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ellis Hogue, and I am on a compiler team at Meta. I'll be talking about how to create an instrumented binary that is lightweight with respect to binary size, uh, and we'll be using debug information. I'll start with some background to help explain why we need instrumentation with low size overhead. Then I'll give an overview of existing instrumentation in LLVM, and I'll focus some, on some key de details to help you understand um, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. Next, I'll be able to explain lightweight instrumentation and go over the results. And lastly, I'll talk about some extensions to lightweight instrumentation by changing the profile data we collect to get even smaller size overhead. When we talk about binary size, we are considering the size of the whole app being shipped to production. This includes the text section and the data section, but not debug info, which is stripped from the binary before it is shipped. On some systems, like embedded devices and mobile phones, it is common to use OZ optimization to minimize binary size. This is done for a few reasons. Uh, smaller apps have less network pressure when they are downloading. This is important because mobile apps are usually updated quite frequently. Smaller apps also have less storage pressure after they are installed. And we even get better performance because smaller text size leads to fewer page faults when mobile apps are starting up. This makes optimizing mobile apps really interesting because it's almost always beneficial to reduce code size. Recently, my colleagues and I at Meta authored a paper that we, where we showed that instrumentation and profile-guided optimization is useful in the mobile space, improving startup performance and even compressed code size. You can read this paper for more details, but for now, I'll be talking about the current instrumentation in LLVM. LLVM has a few different ways to instrument a binary. We'll be talking about IR-level instrumentation called IRPGO. We start with creating an instrumented binary using the fprofile generate flag. This will inject probes into LLVM IR that gathers st statistics about the behavior of the binary. In particular, it'll track function edge counts. For each branch and a function, this will count how many times this will count the number of times each branch edge was taken. fprofile generate can also track indirect function calls, but this won't be the focus of our talk. After we've created an instrumented binary, we can run it one or more times. The runtime will dump a raw profile called default.profraw. These files contain all the instrumentation st statistics that we have gathered in those executions. Then we use the LLVM prof data tool to post-process the data and produce a final optimization profile called default.profdata. Finally, we can feed the optimization profile into the compiler to produce an optimized binary. This will be the binary that is actually shipped to production and hopefully will have performance wins in the real world. Now that we understand instrumentation a bit, Let's take a look at some instrumented binaries. I decided to use the Clane binary for testing, mostly because it's easily accessible and fairly large, and I already know how to build it. Um, and here's the build uh, command for reference if you're interested. So how big is the instrumented binary? That's kind of the question that we care about. We first built Clane using the default release build flags. The base column shows the size of the text section and then the total binary size after stripping debug info. For the second column, we built Clane using the fprofile generate flag for instrumentation. We also used the disable VP flag to disable value profiling. There are a few things to notice in this column. The first is the size of the text section is significantly larger and this is because of the extra code that gets injected into the functions. Then you'll notice three extra data sections that don't show up in the base binary. And if we look at the total binary size, we'll see that the overhead is nearly 
A 50% size increase could lead to significant performance regressions on some devices, like mobile phones. So an instrumented mobile app would have poor user experience and could possibly alter dynamic behavior, which would give inaccurate profiles. Let's take a, look, a closer look at the extra sections in detail. The first is the LVM prof counts section. This section stores the global variables that track edge counts in instrumented builds. If you look at the LLVM IR below, you'll see a global counter variable for a function foo, whose type is an array of 64-bit integers. Basically, these numbers tell us how many times a given basic block was executed. Next is the LLVM prof names section, whose job is to store the names of all the instrumented functions in the binary. As an optimization, these names can be compressed at build time. What's interesting is that this section is only read when dumping the raw profiles. Otherwise, it is completely unused at runtime. The LLVM prof data section is probably the most complicated. At a high level, its job is to correlate the unstructured raw profile data to the functions that they instrument. On the right is a simplified view of this structure, of this section. The fields store metadata for a single instrumented function. We'll see that this section is also unused at runtime, although there is a small caveat that I'll go into. The two fields, values and numValue sites, are used for value profiling. Value profiling uses some dynamic allocations that change the values field. This is an implementation detail that unfortunately means the LLVM prof data section is sometimes written to at runtime. For this reason, lightweight instrumentation does not support value profiling for now, so these fields can be ignored in this talk. The name ref field provides a way to look up the function name from the LLVM prof names section, and it's just a constant value. The function hash is used to detect changes in the source code between instrumentation time and optimization time. The relative counter pointer field is the most important field in this structure. It is used to look up the actual counter value in the raw profile. The function pointer field holds the address of the instrumented function and is really only used for value profiling. And lastly, we have a field that stores the number of edge counters for this function. One interesting point is that this structure is marked as used by the compiler. This prevents the compiler or linker from removing it since nothing in the binary directly references the structure. Unfortunately, function pointers are stored in the structure, meaning functures, functions cannot be removed even if they are truly unused. This prevents all function dead stripping. So now that we understand the instrumented binary a bit better, how can we reduce its size overhead? One solution is to use a sampling-based instrumentation like AutoFDO. AutoFDO uses a Linux tool called Perf to profile non-instrumented binaries and has seen a lot of success in the server space. The obvious advantage is that it has zero binary size overhead. However, these sample profiles are not as precise as instrumentation profiles, which are exact. Also, AutoFDO relies on hardware counters that are unavail unavailable on some devices, like mobile phones. Another solution is to extract the LVM prof data section out of the binary and store it to a separate file for post-processing. This reduces the binary size overhead without affecting runtime performance or profile precision. In fact, this is exactly how we designed a custom technology called MIP which has led to impressive results that is described in our paper that I referenced earlier. Unfortunately, this direction was difficult to get right due to complexities such as relative relocations and comdat sections. We will see that debug info can handle these complexities for us for free. The solution we used for lightweight instrumentation is to use debug info to populate the, the fields of this structure instead of relying on the LLVM prof data section. Debug info does a good job of basically mapping addresses to symbols in a binary. 
And this is well supported because developers rely on this to work on all edge cases, for example, to debug crashes. So for a given counter in the LLVM prof counts section, we can use debug info to look up the address and uh, we can look up the address and even the function that it instruments. This is called debug info correlation because we are correlating raw profiles to their functions using debug info. This means we can populate the relative counter pointer field and the function pointer field using debug info. Then we have three remaining fields in this structure, uh, function name, function hash, and the number of counters. These are compile time constants and must be provided by the compiler. We can add these values to LLVMIR as metadata, which in turn will be stored as constants and in debug info. We can later read that debug info to populate the fields. I've just shown how we can populate these fields from debug info alone. This means we can completely remove the LLVM prof names and the LLVM prof data sections to reduce binary size overhead. Here's the same table I showed earlier, but with an added column for lightweight instrumentation. First, take a look at the text section. Even though the code gem is the same, lightweight instrumentation has nearly three megabytes less overhead than IRPGO due to function debt stripping I talked about earlier. Then notice the LLVM prof names and LLVM prof data sections are completely omitted from the binary. Overall, this gives us a 10% reduction in binary size overhead with no loss to profile data and no performance regressions. We will see that we can improve this further by altering the type of profile data that is collected. But first, let's examine the pipeline for lightweight instrumentation. We start by creating an instrumented binary using the fprofile generate flag with the debug info correlate flag to turn on lightweight instrumentation. An added requirement is the dash G flag, which turns on debug info. Debug info. But remember that debug info is stripped from the binary, so this does not create any overhead. Another caveat I should mention is that lightweight instrumentation currently only supports dwarf debug info. PDB debug info for Windows is not yet supported, but I believe it could be supported in the future quite easily. Then the instrumented binaries run like normal to produce a default.prof light file. These files are different from default.prof raw files in that they only contain data from the LVM prof counts section rather than all three of the sections I talked about earlier. Next, we use the LLVM prof data tool to merge the raw profiles into an optimization profile, except that we also need the debug info flag. Finally, the optimization profile is used like normal. The only change from regular instrumentation is that we have the extra flag in creating the instrumented binary, and we also have the extra flag in merging the raw profiles. All other steps are the same. Function entry coverage is a profile mode used to identify functions that have been executed and those functions that have not. This is useful in test infrastructure to provide a metric for code coverage. Another example, another use case is in production environments where it can be used to identify dead code. In both of these cases, we'd like function coverage to be lightweight in both size and performance. At the entry of each function, we inject code to mark that function as executed. We also create a single byte global variable that is initialized to hex FF. The value hex FF means that the function has not been called, and a value zero means that it has been called. On ARM64, we can take advantage of the zero register by using only two instructions to store zero to that global at each function entry. This allows function entry coverage to have just nine bytes of overhead per function. And here are the binary size results again, but including function entry coverage. And we can see that um, uh, function entry coverage has just 5% total binary size overhead. And this is compared to the 47% overhead by IRPGO. 
Basic block coverage is, is similar to edge count instrumentation, but it's more lightweight in both size and performance. Instead of counting how many times a block has been executed, we can record whether a block has been executed at all. We can do this using a single byte global per block in the same way as function entry, entry coverage. The profile data we collect is less precise than the default edge count profiles, but it can still be used for important code size optimizations. For example, unused basic blocks are perfect candidates for the machine outliner. So do we need to instrument every single basic block in a function for basic block coverage? In the default entry count, in the default edge count instrumentation, there's actually a clever algorithm by Knuth, which basically finds a subset of blocks that needs to be instrumented. We can do something similar for block coverage. On the right, we have a CFG where the gray blocks are instrumented. The coverage of the white blocks is completely inferred from the coverage of the gray blocks, so we do not need to instrument the white blocks. In the end, we're able to get away with instrumenting roughly 60% of basic blocks. Um, we have a diff that is almost ready for review that adds basic block coverage to LLVM. I should add that everything I've talked about before this is already in LLVM, but this is recent stuff that uh, I have not published. When we build the claim binary, we can see that basic block coverage has less than 20% binary size overhead. And this table gives a nice overview of our progress in making instrumented binaries smaller. We started with lightweight instrumentation, which does not create the extra sections like LLVM prof names and LLVM prof data. This reduced binary size without any loss of profile data. Then we created a binary with extremely small size overhead that instruments for function entry coverage. Finally, block coverage provides similar profiles to edge count profiles, but is much more lightweight in both size and performance. Um, before I end, I'd really like to thank my colleagues for their help. I could not have done any of this without their support. And thank you so much for listening. This slide has some of uh, various links if you're interested. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I'll be taking questions now. Any questions from the audience? Yes. Uh, thank you for the talk. Um, I'm curious if this approach is actually compatible with uh, LLVM X-Ray. I'm not sure if RPGO is uh, complementary to X-Ray or is it like a different approach? So what's your opinion on that? I'm sorry, um, I did not quite hear that. I have bad hearing. <laughs> no worries. So my question is basically like, is this approach compatible with LLVM X-Ray and is RPGO uh, like complementary to X-Ray or is it uh, more like uh, solves a different, uh, uh, different problem? Sorry, is it RPGO? I didn't hear the last part. Uh, is it not, does it solve a different problem uh, like compared to LLVM X-Ray? Or is it like compatible, your approach is compatible with LLVM X-Ray, or what, what's your opinion on this? Sorry, um, I think you're asking, is IRP? Oh. He's asking if it's compatible or comparable with LLVM X-Ray? Oh, X-Ray. Um, yeah, so X-Ray is a bit different. Um, I haven't looked into it quite uh, for a bit, um, but X-Ray, it's required to uh, overwrite some uh, instructions, uh, which is also not possible on a lot of systems um, if the text section is read only. Uh, so that's a big limitation, um, and there's a few other differences. Thank you. Any other questions? Great, thank you so much. Thank you.